Thank you, Linus. They fired me. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Miguel Ballester. I'm the product manager of Fairphone 5 and the co-founder of Fairphone. And I'm here today to watch to a uh, Linus Tech Tips uh, video that was made about uh, Fairphone 5. So let's get into it. Before you grab your pitchforks, I am going to keep the Fairphone 5 around. I am a big believer in their mission to build more repairable, more sustainable, and more ethically sourced phones. And with software updates planned all the way through 2031, there is plenty of time for improvements. Which is good, because of things like this. What is this? To be fair to Fairphone... Yes, uh, Linus, I remember very well your Fairphone 4 uh, video where you also praised the same thing. So we are here still. We are 150 people, uh, team really working for the mission of Fairphone. And uh, we keep on doing the same thing. With Fairphone 5, we have delivered a phone that is lighter, with a much better camera, and as repairable. So, uh, but yeah, let's, let's continue watching the video. According to a January email, the two handsets that were delivered to us on August 31st, 2023 are final prototypes and not part of the retail production run that started shipping to customers two weeks later. It's always uh, everything in a rush when you uh, deliver a phone. And of course, we want to get our phones to reviewers as soon as possible. Um, so the so-called PBT samples are production samples. And of course, they are just like mass production devices, but not yet. You know? like, so the whole line is still uh, on trial. There are things that can go wrong. The devices themselves are OK. But the problem is that you can never know if uh, any problem in production does translate into a problem on the phone itself. And that's why they are prototypes still and they are not sold. They are only used for, uh, for reviews. Right out of the box, I was immediately enamored with the optional transparent back. It looks so cool. It's plastic, so you don't have to worry about it <coughs> shattering. And it effortlessly pops off, so you can get to the battery and the rest of the guts. And it's 100% recycled plastic, back in by the time. way. Peering through the transparent back, I found no obvious signs of wireless charging. And while it's not the kind of thing that I use that often, it still feels like a bit of a bummer. Charging efficiency of wireless charging is still not yet there. We are getting there, and uh, I think new protocols will help there. But uh, definitely, if you uh, put on a balance like a more repairable Fairphone 5 or a phone that has wireless charging, we definitely go for a more repairable Fairphone 5. Who knows? In the future, we might integrate wireless charging, but we want to have high efficiency charging, and we want to find a way where we can still have a repairable phone. And I feel the same way about the placement of the nano SIM and micro SD slots. They are under the battery. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm grateful they're included at all. And the battery is not glued in, making it super easy to remove. But why do I need to power down my phone in order to pop in an SD card? How many times do you change your SIM card and your SD card? <laughs> I think I've only done it once. Okay. Flipping things over, the display is fine, I guess. I noticed a yellow tint to it when it's off axis, more than I'm used to seeing on a modern. A yellow tint when you use your phone like this. Hmm. Okay. Modern OLED. And just like the Fairphone 4, the bezels are as large as they are non-uniform, with the top and bottom having at least an extra sea of thickness compared to the sides. Linus, you could also have said that they actually are much more uniform than Fairphone 4 bezels because we worked a lot on that. Um, so the truth is, like phones, uh, you know, when you go over development, um, you need to create space for things. And one thing that typically happens is antenna performance. We offer our phone with a lot of different operators in Europe. So I think at the moment it's more than it's 23 or 22, something like that. And that those antennas need to work really well. So as you go through the development, you need to increase tiny bits of space here and there while still keeping a you know, balanced design. And that's why the bezels on the both sides are good and are smaller than, than we had with uh, Fairphone 4. And then the one the top and the bottom, they that have to do more with the antennas. And indeed, you need to allow for a little bit of space there. But hey, in return, you get a phone that works really well. No. That is nothing compared to the profile view of this bad boy. Damn! 
The profile, yes. Um, actually, let me see. Damn boy! Damn boy! <laughs> Why do you measure it, like, including the camera? I mean, that's 12 millimeters, but, like, including the camera, just measure it where there's no camera bump, right? Like, that's quite okay and quite competitive. You could also have said that, uh, you know, it is improved from Fairphone 4 because we use an OLED display that makes things a little bit thinner while still making sure that it is repairable and has an exchangeable battery, something that you really like to Fairphone 4. So you tell us. And it comes with a weight to match. 212 grams or about seven and a half freedom ounces. 6% lighter than Fairphone 4. Honestly, I think our biggest surprise was the Note 5. Not in every way, mind you. Its gaming performance wasn't amazing. It's eight years old and doesn't even support all the latest and greatest graphics extensions. But for general phone, chat, browser use, it's pretty darn responsive. About a Browse, phone, email use, that's exactly what we want with this phone. Um, gaming, yeah. Mm important, but maybe not so important for a lot of people. So in the end, we need to make choices, right? And, and the type of customers that we are trying to, um, yeah, that they fall in love with Fairphone are maybe not uh, gamers, but fair. Put on par with the Fairphone 5 to the untrained observer, at least if you don't turn the 90 hertz display on on the Fairphone 5. 90 hertz will, you know, it will feel super responsive, but it will also use more battery. So, in the end, uh, the possibility is there. So as a, as a user, you can choose for that option. But if we would put that as a default option, then that would mean for everyone, even for people that don't even understand what 60 or 90 hertz are, uh, would have a battery that would perform less. So in the end, it's all indeed design choices. And we choose for going for 60 hertz default. And if you really want and you are that type of user, you can change to 90. Of course. The Fairphone did beat out the Note in more of our controlled tests, but not by as much as you'd expect. And against contemporary competition, the Fairphone fares even worse. Not Indeed, it's the fairest phone we've ever made. 70% uh, fair materials, so that means recycled and from sustainable and responsible mines. And we have the fairest battery and we have eight years software support and it we have a lot of other things that should also be put in the balance here, but hey, let's just compare tech specs. Boring. Not only did the Pixel 8 outperform it in all but one of our tests, the one test where it didn't lose was the time to fully charge the battery. One hour. Even then it was a tie. Also, once charged, the Pixel lasted twice as long before it was fully discharged. For a very specific case, right? It says YouTube playback. Um, and yeah, I mean, the Fairphone 5 gives you 10 hours in front of YouTube. Do you want to be 10 hours watching YouTube films? Yeah. Ah, that's why 90 hertz is off by default. This probably comes down to Fairphone's unorthodox choice of SOC. They went with the Qualcomm QCM6490, which TLDR is not a phone chip, rather. Well, technically, the 6490 is like the Snapdragon 778G+. So it is also a phone chip because all these industrial applications also have very high requirements. And by the way, the Fairphone 5 is not the only phone in the market with that, uh, with that chip. So. It is not so unorthodox, especially for us, because we basically get good performance of a more or less a seven series uh, chipset, um, but we get the uh, extended software support from Qualcomm. Thank you, Qualcomm. We love your IoT uh, uh, portfolio because it helps us bring our goals a little bit further and make normal what we think should be normal, that is that you can keep your phone for so long. Unfortunately, its Cryo 670 cores are based on older ARM designs that just can't compete with modern chips. Though to be honest with you, you can still do more or less the same. Again, email, call, WhatsApp, social media. It's just the same. The vibration is inexcusably weak compared to our challengers, making it easy to miss a phone call when it's sitting in my pocket. And compounding this issue, while the max 
we are going to put that on the on our list. Perceived as almost three times as loud. That is, isn't that a lovely sound? We work here with developers, and I have to say, I hear that notification quite often in the office. And I'm with you, Linus. It's quite annoying. So we'll make sure to work on that minimum volume. So my options were to either miss my calls by having it on vibrate or annoy the heck out of everyone around me. Now, admittedly, I can be a bit of a special case. It's funny, though, because we have not heard that much from our users. But so it might be that it's a special case. Um, I use my phone every day. I don't miss calls. I have it always on vibration because I don't like having sounds around me. So I don't know. We'll, we'll look into it, definitely. Get a hold of me. And this alone was enough to be a deal breaker. Really, Linus? A deal breaker? You're calling a deal breaker basically something that can be solved in a monthly software update, which anyway, we will keep on working for the next years to come. We are now focusing very much on, you know, customer feedback and things that we kind of need to fix still, but that will come. But don't worry, I'm, I'm definitely going to create a Linus list and you will see those fixes coming. I've been daily driving Samsung phones for a long time, and I have developed a bit of a preference for how Samsung does things, which led to my next deal breaker. On the Fairphone, I cannot move the back button over to the right side. Making matters worse, I can't even move the stock Google widget up and down without using a custom launcher. Yeah, the Google widget on the front. That, that brought a lot of discussions internally. Um, should not break any contract with Google here, but um, we'll keep on looking into it. But basically, if you are using the quick step launcher, you need to just keep it very much how it is. And that's what we have today. But you are free to download any launcher you want from the Play Store. There are thousands, maybe. And when you do that, you can customize them as you like. I don't know, maybe you would like that Fairphone develops a launcher. That's maybe something to put on the list as well. And Plex would just stop responding entirely, very regularly. Yeah, I don't know what to comment on that. We just don't see that with the phones that we are using for mass production. So yeah, maybe that's part of uh, having sent you a prototype. And we're sorry for that. Maybe next time we should not do that. Uh, oh, the screen brightness bounced around like my kids at a birthday party. Fair point. This one was on the list, so um, yeah, we are still working on it. We'll see a patch coming quite soon, but I cannot tell exactly when, but it's nearly there. Um, camera, didn't use it a ton. When I did, the results were oversaturated, oversharpened, and generally overprocessed. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we also had other reviews that said that uh, it was an amazing camera and it was really good. And we are really happy and uh, proud of it because it is really uh, an improvement from when we launched uh, Fairphone 4. Uh, by the way, Fairphone 4 has a better camera now as well, launching actually today. We are recording now as it has been launched, but I don't know, this video may come later. But anyway, it's launched today. So your Fairphone 4 camera is also much better now. Um, so I don't know, I don't know. Camera is a subjective thing. Actually, there was a, there was a test done by uh, Marquez where people could, you know, like uh, select from multiple pictures which picture they preferred. And actually, Fairphone 5 came out quite good on the top list. So um, yeah, subjective thing. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot better than my ancient Note 9 as far as rear camera quality <laughs> Luckily. goes. To be clear, there were positives too. The running apps notification in the shade Kind of nice. It's a, it's a stock Android option. We didn't even do that. Just, just, just came on the Android software. <coughs> okay, I kid. There, there are there are more of them. The repairability, legitimately, really. Really, that's the only thing you managed to highlight about Fairphone Five. One, <laughs> one feature that we don't even develop ourselves because it just comes in the the base code. Um, I don't know what to say, sorry. Really cool. And they've obviously put considerable effort into making things as straightforward as possible if you need to replace a part. But if I'm being honest, I feel like they've almost overshot the mark and they've made some unnecessary compromises. Compared to our humble Note 5, for example, 
other than the initial hassle of removing the back, it's not actually that much harder to work on. I mean, you need to give it a bit of a drink of isopropyl alcohol to release the adhesive on the battery, but after that, it's a pretty easy swap. You got the same ribbon cables, the same tiny screws, tiny plugs. They're all the same size, but Samsung did it without turning their phone into a freaking weapon. No, but they just got a four out of 10 from iFixits on repairability and Fairphone 5 got a 10 out of 10 for repairability. And in the world where we're living in, I believe that that is quite important. It kind of seems to me that by going the extra mile and turning everything into modules, Fairphone has solved some problems, but they've also created some new ones, leaving them with a device that is, in their own words, a fair phone. Not a great phone. And unless you... Well, thank you, Linus, because I've been meaning to speak about this with all of you out there reviewing phones and making phones. What makes a phone something great? We think here that having a phone that is highly repairable, that um, is set up in a way that pays living wages to uh, workers in the line, that integrates fair materials up to 70%, so sometimes 100% fair lithium, for example, uh, from Peru, that actually contributes and changes the everyday reality of miners in the artisanal mining sector in Congo, for example, and many other countries. We think that is great as well. And we hope to also contribute uh, to bring that discussion. And we hope that you also ask yourself that question. What makes a phone great? And maybe ask the other manufacturers what that is. Thanks. I want to thank you for putting the time to review our phone. It's really great to get some, uh, some airtime. A lot of people are going to watch this video, so uh, that's, that's also great. Um, yeah, some points were really fair and we take note and uh, we'll sure, surely address them. Um, some points were a little bit strange or like, yeah, strange comparisons, I would say. But anyway, let's keep that discussion and uh, let's make sure that, uh, that, uh, that conversation about what makes great technology continues. And uh, see you next time. We're looking forward to next videos. Thank you.